Good Monday morning. This is Deacon Rick Bauer. Good to have all of you here for Scripture 210, Week 7, Reading the Old Testament Theologically. This is one of those weeks that I've really looked forward to, but I know you may not be feeling that way given that we have a term paper um, due this week, but let me just walk through uh, our roadmap for um, what's going to be going on. Um, uh, we'll have a little bit of, of uh, term paper guidance. Um, we'll cover the module, Reading the Old Testament Theologically, Part 1, uh, the discussion and uh, some advice on the final exam, just to uh, get you thinking about that. Um, by the way, um, it was, um, I think it was Eusebius, no, it was Jerome, who, talking about the Gospel of John, said, the Gospel of John will bathe the baby and drown an elephant. And I would say the same thing about Genesis um, 1 and 2 in this area. A lot of really good reflections. And uh, I teach the Pentateuch class for CDU for the graduate students. So this is an area of, uh, of great love and study. And um, we'll uh, try to drop a few things that may be helpful as we, as we go through. Um, the learning objectives, um, you'll understand uh, Emeritus Pope Benedict's two approaches to the Genesis story. Uh, compare and contrast Genesis 1 um, uh, and, and 2 with the other creation accounts, not only biblically but in other uh, ancient Near Eastern cultures. Um, how Genesis it can be compatible with modern scientific theories. Uh, some real interesting work there. And then what is the deep meaning on a symbolic level um, of the Genesis creation story? I mean, it's about Sabbath. It's about a dwelling place for a God on this earth. Um, a lot of a lot going on there. The basic Catholic beliefs about God that emerge from uh, Genesis. Um, Importantly, Imago Dei, born in the image and created in the image and likeness of God. The deep unity between the two creation accounts in Genesis. I used to be embarrassed, like, you know, who who missed this edit here that they got two of the same story? I mean, didn't cop, did the copy editor get this? And um, and as a uh, as a fundamentalist, it caused uh, no no small amount of of uh, concern, so to speak, trying to harmonize what is completely different in some ways. So um, we'll talk about that. Um, and then um, we'll, we'll introduce briefly the documentary hypothesis. You'll get a, a deeper look at that in some other places. I'll give you some references that may be helpful in this area. Um, and uh, I, I have lived under the shadow of the documentary hypothesis since I started uh, graduate school in theology in the 1980s, and it's amazing how much has changed in that um, uh, in, in those decades. Um, reading assignment is uh, in the beginning uh, from Emeritus Pope Benedict, uh, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger, at, as he wrote at the time, um, and uh, read the whole thing. There's a uh, as I mentioned last week, a full digital copy available in the document repo uh, as well. Um, the lecture topics are fantastic. The truth of Genesis 1, uh, a.k.a. Uh, I, I can't do a very good Jack Nicholson from uh, A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth, um, but interesting. And then creation and modern science, um, <laughs> to quote, uh, Rodney King, why can't we all just get along? Um, I found the conflict is is not so much the Bible um, and and modern uh, science, but uh, misguided scientists and misguided preachers um, seem to be where we're really having the conflict. And then modern science and six days of creation. And I'm going to wait to share this with you later. Um, would you be better off with just one day of creation? I can show you from the scripture how to prove that. And finally, the uh, Sabbath structure on, uh, on creation. Um, so the discussion topic is what does original sin mean? 
when we interpret it correctly. Um, and looking at Ratzinger's uh, assessment, what is your own answer to this question? Looking forward to, uh, to jumping in. Um, don't forget the term paper is due this week. Must be Times Roman 12 point font or similar. Don't don't single space it. Um, that way I can put comments in there and et cetera. Five to seven pages. This is not a dissertation. Um, you know, please don't. I can't read. My eyes are old. But no, no. Just um, it, you know, I I, I don't. I'm not going to cut you off or grade you less if you if you exceed that, but give it some guidance and please don't please don't take my mercy uh, um, uh, for granted. Okay, um, it's due this Saturday, October sixteenth, eleven fifty nine. Penalty of five percent per day. This is apparently this is what CDU charges. If you have a problem, remember what my late father. Always said, bad news does not improve with age, so talk to me, okay? Uh, I prefer grading in Word just because it's easier to make the corrections. Um, the rubric is here, and remember, the rubric is your friend. Organization, style, correctness, completeness. Make sure you get all the deliverables done from number of references, the types, the spreads, the... Uh, coverage, all, all those kinds of things. Read the assignment over clearly so you can get there, okay? Guidance for the final exam. Um, look at the learning objectives for each week. Make sure that you know the self-check quizzes and look at the answer keys. Look over the lectures. You got two parts, five short answer questions, in other words, two to five sentences, and then two essay questions about one page in length. You have the choice of which questions uh, to answer. Um, given how we're closing up with Genesis 1 through 3, that's not what you want to skip in terms of reading. Um, so make sure that you've, you've done your Ratzinger homework in there. I'll, I'll um, prepare a little, some study guides uh, in that area and have those out um, later this week. All right, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.